We are tackling the most complex energy, security, and environmental problems facing the world today. Asking the tough questions. Why? Why not? Proposing novel solutions. Working with the best in industry, academia, and the national labs. Researching, developing, and demonstrating. Applying the energy of innovation. It's what we do. It's what we do. It's what we do. Within the Department of Energy's system of multi-program research and development laboratories, Idaho National Laboratory occupies a unique position at the intersection of energy supply and security. DOE's designated nuclear energy research, development, and demonstration leader, INL plays a key role in the global nuclear energy renaissance, the new worldwide reconsideration and expansion of nuclear energy based on its capacity to deliver power cleanly, safely, reliably, and on a massive scale. INL's historical contributions to nuclear science and engineering are unparalleled. Beginning with production of the world's first usable amounts of electricity from nuclear power and continuing with the design and construction of more than 50 mostly first of their kind nuclear reactors for concept, fuels and materials testing as well as safety code development. Today, INL's advanced test reactor is regarded as the world's premier materials test reactor, gaining distinction in 2007 as a national scientific user facility. The move makes it easier and more cost efficient for scientists from universities, the commercial sector, and other federal agencies to conduct their cutting edge nuclear fuels and materials research and development domestically because the capabilities offered by ATR are not available anywhere else in the U.S. Along with leading nuclear energy research, INL is focused on forming new partnerships across the energy spectrum by working internationally with governments, industry, major academic centers, and other laboratories. This collaborative work includes key energy development research in fossil, alternative, and renewable fuels and systems. Notably, INL began contributing to hybrid and electric vehicle testing and research in association with significant global companies in the early 1980s. INL performs important research in hydrogen production, cellulosic ethanol, and carbon conversion, as well as for DOE's hydropower and geothermal programs. INL was a partner in developing the largest first-generation naval fuel reformer in the world for hydrogen generation. On the security side of the energy equation, INL is home to the unparalleled critical infrastructure test range. The test range, complete with full-scale functioning systems for the electric power grid, wireless communications and other key support elements, has become a leading center for the development of technologies and processes needed to protect the nation's critical infrastructures and related components. The test range also allows for testing and development of unmanned aerial vehicles, trace explosives detection and testing, and lightweight armor development and testing. Because INL's innovative researchers and support staff need the right tools and environment to do their jobs, the laboratory has embarked on an ambitious drive to renew itself. From the new space and security power systems facility to new offices and laboratories within the research and education campus, new assets are being methodically brought online to expand the lab's horizons. Advanced modeling and simulation capabilities at the laboratory took a major leap forward late in 2007 with the unveiling of INL's High Performance Computing Center and its IceStorm supercomputer. And the Center for Advanced Energy Studies, a partnership among INL and Idaho's three universities, is well positioned to become a premier international resource for promoting and performing research and revitalizing education and training in energy science, engineering, technology, policy development, and related disciplines. Taken in total, Idaho National Laboratory is a resource of exceptional depth and breadth for a state, region, nation, and world struggling to meet rapidly escalating demand for energy securely delivered to the right place at the right time.
Imagine if you could harvest the sun's energy even after the sun had set. Now, imagine the technology needed to capture this energy costs mere dollars per square foot. At the Idaho National Laboratory, that dream is becoming a reality through the work of INL scientists partnering with Micro Continuum Incorporated and the University of Missouri. Researchers have discovered a novel approach to the collection of the sun's energy using interlocking spiral nano antennas. The width of these nano antennas are only 1 25th the diameter of a human hair. Because of their size, they absorb energy in the infrared part of the spectrum, just outside the range of what is visible to the eye. The sun radiates a lot of heat and some of that energy is soaked up by the earth and released later, long after sunset. INL scientist Stephen Novak is part of a team exploring the potential of these nano antennas. Well, this technology is very similar to what we use in our cell phones and in our radios. Uh, what happens is the light comes in and hits the antenna and causes the electrons to move back and forth in the uh, metal. And by doing that, it's very similar to what you would see in a piece of wood floating on the ocean going up and down. And that causes an alternating current and that current then goes flows to the feed point of the antenna. While these nano antennas can now be easily manufactured, a crucial part of the process has yet to be fully developed. Researchers still don't have a way to store or transmit the electricity. In about three to five years we should be able to start seeing this infiltrate some of the uh, housing and facility markets either in installation or in small electronic devices for heat sinks uh, and then probably about four to six years out, we should be able to make applications in solar energy. With continued research, these nano antennas could someday revolutionize the way we use solar power, from charging portable devices like iPods and cell phones, to roofing products which could power our homes. They might one day replace traditional solar panels and cost much less. Every minute, Enough of the sun's light reaches the earth to meet the world's energy demand for an entire year. What if every house, every building in an entire city could collect that energy? Since Bell Labs' creation of the first viable silicon photovoltaic cell in 1954, people have dreamed of this kind of cheap, plentiful solar power. Now, a small Palo Alto company called NanoSolar may finally be putting this futuristic concept within reach. The challenge in the solar industry is to have products that can efficiently convert sunlight to electricity, but do so at a reasonably low cost. Traditional photovoltaic cells have typically been made out of crystalline silicon. They're expensive, heavy, and fragile, and have to be installed in a supportive frame. Silicon for all of its structural perfection and purity, does not actually absorb sunlight all that strongly. There are certain thin film materials that absorb light anywhere from 100 to 1,000 times more readily. And because of that, you can use very thin layers of those materials. The challenge is to find techniques by which you can make those thin layers in very high quality and a very low cost. Nanosolar intends to accomplish this by repurposing high-speed fabrication techniques and machines typically used in large-scale electronics manufacturing. Here's how Nanosolar's process works. One of the first steps is to deposit a electrode layer that will collect the electricity. The next step is to deposit the optical absorber layer which actually will absorb the sunlight. In this machine, the optical absorber layer, a mixture of copper, indium, and selenium nanoparticles, is printed directly onto the foil. Then on top, you put another electrical coating that collects the uh, electricity from the top and also allows the sunlight to come through. Nanosolar projects that the finished product will cost about one-third that of traditional solar cells. The company is currently building what will be the nation's largest solar manufacturing plant in San Jose and plans to bring products to the market in 2008. With the new generations of photovoltaics that are coming that are based on flexible materials, they can be basically rolled onto your roof, not unlike flexible roofing materials that houses have. So you could power most everything in your house with solar today and hook up that power to the electrical grid 
So in the daytime, when your solar panels are delivering more power than your house could possibly consume, you can sell it back to the utility and turn your electric meter backwards, only then to buy electricity from the utility at night in a seamless fashion, no batteries at your house, nothing to figure out. In this vision of the future, a thin film covered city might drive the electrical grid itself, essentially functioning as its own power plant. Increasingly, you'll see it everywhere, or you won't see it, but it will be everywhere, powering your life just exactly in the way you live it today.